episode i have no freaking idea of vandals it we once again it wouldn't be a vandals episode if we didn't take a hiatus and we took a hiatus and now i don't know uh what what episode we're on we're also recording from a hotel in the middle of santa monica california but i'm so freaking pumped to bring this episode because we've got the two new kids on the block who are i mean the freaking hottest thing since sliced bread we've got jake and rooney on the show fellas how you doing what up what up doing well how are you good jake what about you man Doing solid, man. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you guys. Have you guys settled into LA? Yeah, I'm from here, so this has been, you know, very similar to where where I came from. So it's very easy for me to transition over here. Wait, you're from here? Were you born in the like in California or in LA? Right, I'm from Southern California, so like ah. 30 minutes away from where I'm at now. Yeah. I had no idea. This is, I mean, this is wasn't disruptive for you at all, then, was it? Nope. It was, a, it was pretty easy. I mean, I've been moving around to play Valorant, mm -hmm. so I was in like Philadelphia for a bit with Sonics, and I was in Colorado for a minute, mm -hmm. and then now we're back here. Jake, what about you, man? Where are you from? I'm from Florida originally, but I actually moved here from Texas because I was going to school in Texas. And mm, UT? Moving from, uh, no, nah, it was like a small Christian college. I was playing Valorant there, actually, oh, on nice. like, a, like a collegiate type thing. And then I was in Florida originally, like that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. Moving moving here is totally different. It's such nice weather. Florida's just <laughs> humid and hot twenty four seven. Collegiate type thing. Is that, is that what it was? What do you mean? Yeah, it, 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 it was. It was. <laughs> um yeah. Well dog, I'm not gonna lie to you. Texas is pretty hot too. Texas I mean, Texas doesn't feel great all the time. It is bad for for the like the short like six seven months I was there. It was yeah. pretty cold. I won't lie. It was it, it wasn't really too hot. It was cold. Yeah, they were going through like a bit of like a cold front. It was uh. like it was even snowing at points. So it was it was nice actually there a lot. Dog, I didn't know Texas could get snow. I didn't either until <laughs> I went there. Apparently, that's one of the first years they've gotten it in a while. <laughs> You're just bringing it with you, I guess. I guess something like that. Yeah. Well, Fellas, I know that obviously you guys are the newest addition to the Cloud9 roster. There's been a lot of talk with it has also come a lot of expectations. But I think the fun thing, and this is this is what I would like to get to do uh, in this episode, is I, I want to get to know you guys, right? Because we've, we've, you know, we've exchanged DMs and things like that. And I've seen you guys play and, you know, whatever. It's been a blast. But I don't, I don't know that I, or, or genuinely, to be honest... I don't know that people really know you guys. And, and I think given the fact that, that Cloud9 and you two in particular continue to exceed expectations in ways that I don't know that anyone expected, I think people want to know who is Jake? Who is Rooney, right? So I, Rooney, let, let's start with you. And I want you to take me all the way back to the very beginning of Valorant. And you don't have to go through you know a ton of detail on every single stage, but take, take, take me back from the very beginning. Right. So, uh, I mean, I played Counter-Strike prior to Valorant. So when it came out, you know, everyone was waiting to get their Twitch drop for their Valorant code and, and start Same, beta. Bro. Yeah. So, so yeah, it started in beta. Um, I had a lot of fun playing that. I'm pretty sure I only got to like a mortal one or something like that, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't play it like that much. And then everyone started competing, and then there was like some random rumor that happened, and nobody wanted to compete anymore because no one knew what the competitive scene was going to look like. Wait, so everyone what is took this a break. Rumor? What is this? I, I don't remember what it was. All I know is that everyone like didn't think that there was going to be a, a good competitive space for Valorant, so people wanted to huh. go back to Counter Strike or something like that. Okay. So everyone took a little break, including myself, and then I came back when um, like life allowed me to again. So mm -hmm. I was working mm -hmm. a normal job at the time. And What'd then, you do? um, I worked with um autistic kids at a high school. So nice. I was like a, a teacher aide, basically that I worked with like physical education with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would play after I got home from work, and I would just play for fun. And I'd play in like Discord. Um, like I, I, I found a group of friends in beta that I kept in touch with, and they invited me to their ten man Discord server, mm -hmm. and I would play tens mans with them, and that's where I met James IRL, who was previously the coach of Cloud Nine, and then Hundred Thieves. Yeah, hang on, you randomly met James through a Discord server, right? That's and, wild. And he's basically the guy that was like, "Well, you're actually good at this game. You should try competing." And that was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. So that's when I started competing for the first time, and then I made my own team and was an IGL on my first team. 
and then that was ZMM. And then from ZMM, I got asked to join Sonics. Um, and then I played on Sonics until Cloud9. And so I've always IGL'd my own teams and kind of created and brought in, you know, new faces to each team. And on Sonics, I kind of even brought over the ZMM players. So mm -hmm. I played with Shonk. I brought him to Sonics with me. And then we brought uh, Enjoy to Sonics. And then I brought Mina to Sonics, which were all ZMM players mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. And then um, when we didn't make the qualification for challengers, then, um, you know, I got in touch with MCE and then here we are. Well, we'll, we'll touch more on that because I think uh, I, I want to pick your brain on that a little bit more too, but it's just wild. I love James. James is such good people. It's just so right. cool that, you know, this community, just something as random as like a discord server is how some right. of that can end up. That's just wild. Jake, what about you, man? Uh, similar to Rooney, I started off in beta, just waiting for the beta code. I never actually played like any other game, like super competitively, just like for fun, like Rainbow Six, CS a bit, but I was mm -hmm. only like playing matchmaking in CS. Mm -hmm. I, I got the beta code. I didn't really compete in the beginning, but I ended up hitting like the, it was called Valorant in beta. Mm -hmm. I hit mm -hmm. that rank in beta and I was like, oh, maybe I'll try it. Cause I'm like competing against people that I like new and idolized from counter-strike like sure. sabrosa and stuff like that like that was one like one of the first pros i went against and i was like maybe i could do something with this so i just started like competing like those small weekly tournaments with like friends any team that would take me pretty much i was just playing with them building experience eventually i got good enough to get to a point where i was on this team called team recaru and they were actually like a pretty like okay tier two team at the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then eventually like i grew a name for myself like a lot of people knew me as like someone that just like plays on smokes and just swings people like not many people <laughs> were doing that aside from like maybe your like star player marv like he was the only one really doing that where he yeah. just swung on smokes marv is crazy and bro he is of course and like that's actually where i took mm -hmm. a lot of my inspiration from him and scuba one of the players I looked up to like a lot, like mm -hmm. trying to get better at the game and learning more from their play style. And then eventually I got, I had like several salary trials that just didn't work out. And it was really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Like obviously like having that not work out, like getting so close to like your dream of competing and like going pro, it was super frustrating, but like I realized that I could do it. And so like a lot of people in my life, including my girlfriend pushed me to go forward and keep on playing the game that I play. And then eventually Matt DM'd me while I was actually in college and was like free agent with a bunch of question marks. I said, yes, I sent him some thoughts. <laughs> now here we are. All right. Let's because you both hinted at it a little bit. And I, I am curious about this because it seemed so I'll, I'll admit it seemed so out of the blue. Right. Like I've I've known MC for a little while um, and we've we've kept up. We, we've stayed connected uh, and we. We chatted a little bit through this process. Um, how 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 did all of this come to be? MC reached out to both of you individually. How did did you guys talk to him before? Uh, what? Tell me a bit about that. Right. So my my history with with MC is is pretty funny. Um, when I was a free agent on ZMM, mm -hmm. um, before I even joined Sonics, uh, he reached out to me. Um, this is when the guard was making roster moves when they were trying to find their initiator before they got Trent. Mm -hmm. and um, I was one of those options before things changed very quick because ah. it wasn't for any other reason other than um, like they didn't have enough time to do anything, so they just had to pick someone and go, mm -hmm. and that, that person ended up being Trent. So Matt knew of me prior, and, you know, we've had that, you know, connection of, you know, just knowing each other. Mm -hmm. And then um, this time around, very similar thing. Same DM that I got the first time around with the guard. <laughs> like, hey, w what's going on type thing. Yeah. Um, did he, when, when you were still, when he was still building the guard, did he just cold DM you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same, same, same way. How did he, um, how had he heard of you? Right. So Matt is a very logical coach in the sense of how he chooses players he's not the type of guy to like go on vlr and look at the stats and see who's playing really well mm -hmm. instead he kind of from what i've heard I, I mean this might not be entirely true but he likes to pick players that he's seen in server before whether it's a scrim or a match and if they've done well against his teams or if they've done well in scrims against him so like an example is trent the mm -hmm. reason why he joined the guard is that they played one scrim against Trent's team and Trent was playing Viper on like bind. I'm pretty sure it was. And Trent sure. dropped like 38 kills in a scrim. And then that's <laughs> how he joined the guard. 
And then similarly for me, my name was on that list as well because the only person that MCE has lost to, I beat the guard at LAN in Fuller at Fullerton, like mm. in December of last year. Mm -hmm. And then I beat him one other time in some online event. So his like two biggest losses he says were to me. So that's why my <laughs> name was in his mouth. Yeah. Jake, what about you? Do you also have MCE's number? No, <laughs> similar thing to the scrim story, like with Trent, like I just would be on a team, like I think I tried with like both iterations of the Knights roster, both Knights Acad and Knights Main, like mm. before, like mm -hmm. obviously that disbanded because they're doing like the whole Challengers thing now. Mm -hmm. I tried with both of those teams, and I think it was them who I scrimmed against, and also like scrimming against like different head coaches from different teams, like uh, the coach for the old Complexity coach Ruin vouched for mm -hmm. me, the old mm -hmm. Knights coach vouched for me, like, and like that's how my name got to him, like pretty much just being a scrim demon against them. Now, Jake, you mentioned that you had a couple of trials that didn't go well, right? They they didn't mm -hmm. pan out for one reason or another. What I mean, what kept you going? Because I think a lot of people. I mean, they just fold, right? After you get rejected X amount of times, however, however many times it was, people fold. Why did you? Why did you not stop? Uh, for me, it was about like having like genuine love for the game, and like the people mm. around me were definitely extremely supportive. Like, I probably had like three or four salary tryouts. That the Knights one obviously didn't work out because of the whole Challengers thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I f I was confident that I had that spot. And then a few other ones, like, I just didn't perform up to my own expectations or sure. the nerves happened and whatever happened, it just it just went down that way. And it was, it was unfortunate. But, like, a lot of the people around me, like, both in college and my girlfriend and my parents were like, oh, you should keep on doing this. Like, you're this mm -hmm. close. You're right about to reach it. You may as well keep on going. Like, you put so much time in already. And just, it, it's easier said than done, but I just kept on, like, pushing myself to, like, work on the stuff I needed to work on, even if it wasn't, like, the most fun thing to do at the time. Mm. Well, if, AKA, with... oh, he's ahead, level Ernie. 600, and uh, at that point, like, you've put too much time into quit. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, give, I give him shit all the time we're loading into scrims, and he's level 600, and the rest of our team's, like, level 200. <laughs> He's put in too much time to give up. There's no giving up anymore. I'm saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was sunken cost, dog. Uh, if not for your friends and your family and your parents and whatnot and, and, and all that stuff, would you have quit? I think I would have considered it longer than I had. I think I would yeah. have weighed my options. like Because pretty much I had to make a choice like to follow my dreams mm. or stay in college. Because... Realistically, I could not do both at the same time. Like when yeah. I was trying to do both at the same time, I was struggling in one or the other. Like you're mm -hmm. either half-assing mm -hmm. one or half-assing the other. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's just how it works out. Like and college was the one that I chose to put on the back burner. And let me tell you, my GPA was not pretty <laughs> for that time period. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Was it you? I've heard a rumor about someone's GPA recently. That wasn't you, was it? What was, if I may. Well, what I was your not. GPA? <laughs> I don't think the rumors about me, but my GPA was like a like a bad, like failing, like a one point six or it, something. I think it was you. You had like a GPA of one, or was no, it that no. low? No, it was it was not that low. <laughs> and this semester, I had a four point oh. Before Matt reached out to me the trial, and I like just pretty much stopped attending classes. Like I was. <laughs> That, that was it, bro. I was, if that didn't work out, it would have been done for college, too. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't you, then. Maybe it wasn't you. All right. Rooney, on January 22nd, you make a tweet oh, well. that you're an unrestricted free agent. Okay? Mm -hmm. Two months later, and, you know, there's stuff that happens beside, behind the scenes, but mm -hmm. two months later, it's announced that you are the new IGL for Cloud9 in the, in the wake of all of the, the drama and the news and kind of everything that's going on. It's announced that, that you are the new IGL for Cloud9. Seven days after that, you're taking the stage for the very first time ever. All right. Were you, did you feel like you were ready? Yeah. Um, I've always had this like concept of the game that it, the, Tier between tier doesn't really matter too much, especially if your team is at that level. So, like, mm. joining a team with three, like, veteran players, the game's not going to be much different for me. And I just kind of have to mold into what they have. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the change wasn't that big for me. And then uh, I've been playing competitive sports for a long time. Like, I played baseball growing up. So I've been on a big stage in that sense. Mm. 
and I played at a very high level in baseball. So when I got to the stage, I wasn't any nervous at all. I was, I was ready. Jake, did you feel like you were ready when you when you took the stage for the very first time? Did you feel like you're like, yeah, no, no jitters, no, no nervousness, no, no early things like that. You were good to go. Oh, I was nervous, but I felt like I was ready. <laughs> Dylan, on the other hand, he doesn't get nervous. I don't know. He's stone cold, man. That, that's that's him. I was nervous then. I'm not nervous now, but like taking the stage on the first match, I was nervous, but I knew I was ready. Like, like I'm performing well in scrims against tier one teams. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're not one to one, but still, like I I knew I was ready for it. and I knew I could do it, but the nerves were definitely there. Dude, I'm remembering now your opening map. It was on Pearl. And you guys were nerding out so hard. Some of the tech and some of the like, the the preparation that I could see in the map that you guys played. I'm, I mean, and tell me if I'm entirely wrong, but it looked like you guys. I don't know how you could have been more prepared for that opening map. It was that was that the case? Was there a lot of work leading into right. it? Right. Well, that was previously one of their favorite maps before mm-hmm. me and Jake joined. So, they, like, they had really good results on Pearl prior. And we just ended up using the same comp that they had, so they already had a lot of stuff prepared, and we kind of just slotted in. Um, we did have to like do a couple like moves in terms of who's going to play what, mm-hmm. and we trialed like a, a little bit of that. But you know where we ended up is what was comfortable for you know all of us, and it ended up working out well. I think we started off really slow though, and our computers were lagging, which is you know interesting on LAN. Mm-hmm. And then once everything got back to normal, like we we found our stride and 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 took it home. So yeah, yeah. you guys won three rounds in the first half and then it was the three nine blessing and you guys just freaking right. rolled them in the second half eg looked lost mm-hmm. jake right. did you normally feel- our attack side was the stronger side huh. on that map so when we went down nine three it was like oh no that's usually our strong <laughs> oh, <no>. side <laughs> and then we lost pistol and it was like oh shit okay and then you know we got the eco and and brought it back from there yeah Jake, what was going through your mind when you're down nine three at halftime, and then you lose the pistol against against what is let I mean, what is considered to be one of the the lower of the teams in the Americas? Uh, it was rough because we knew we like well, me and Dylan were trialing. We knew we were like, beating them in scrims, like mm. we were playing well, and like you said, we were way better on attack side than we were on defense side. So going down that much, it, it was tough for like. The mental, but like a lot of these players on the team, like the veteran players, Elsa, Seppa, and Leaf, like mm. they're obviously like keeping the mental up, like making sure like that me and Dylan both know that we are still in this game. Mm-hmm. And then like we eco them with Dylan popping up on the Grim Wall in heaven, mm-hmm. and everyone just laughed about the Grim Wall, like that shit was absurd. <laughs> and then we just end up like winning out from there, like it just kind of all clicked right then and there. Like nobody was nervous, nobody was unready everyone was prepared to like make the comeback at that point was that about when you lost the jitters when dylan popped off on that second round probably i'd say so (laughs) um now both of you spent a a decent amount of time in either collegiate or in tier two and and rooney uh, i i want to get your thoughts on this as the caller for the team And, and you alluded to this earlier and you said something to the effect of you know, from tier, uh, the tier gap doesn't feel that big, right? The game is, is pretty comparable. Uh, is right. that, is that fair to say? Um, well, I, I think that tier one teams are generally going to be tier two teams, but also at the same time, some tier two teams are above their own tier. Mm. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, the guard and M80, right? Sure. Like they're, they just look ahead of everyone else in the North American challengers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure that if you slotted them into, you know, this partnership league, then they would perform just fine. Yeah. Those two teams specifically. Um, and I'm sure the same thing, you know, if, if you interchange like me and Valen, you know, I would do fine on the guard. He would do fine on cloud nine, you know, um, Hmm. the, the skill gap is really the overall as a team instead of like player based. So if the team already has a high value of players and you slot in, you're going to become that value or somewhere near it. Right. Sure. So. Sure. Sure. So you, would you say then that the gap or the difference when it comes to calling between tier one and tiers two is, is mainly, mainly in like the macro and the calling itself, because individually, once you get to that level, everyone is, I mean, with some rare exceptions, everyone is as good. Right. I, and this might be a hot take and who knows this might this might flow somewhere but um calling at this level is easier 
um, because these what? teams are doing stuff that are smarter than tier two teams, uh. so it's easier to read. And if you have a good, you know, knowledge of the game, it's easier to read what these teams huh. are doing because they're not going to be doing these out-of-pocket things that, you know, you don't have Oxy flying in on, at timings that should never be even there. You know, sure. you don't have players doing stuff that you can't expect. And then on top of that, I'm also paired with, you know, great mid-round teammates yeah. that make my job a lot easier as well because the three teammates that we, me and Jake joined are three of the best probably mid-rounders in North America. Mm -hmm. So for me specifically, my job became very easy um, joining this team. Jake, I often, so I'm a, I'm a big college football fan. Um, and I, you know, I often, just because I'm a fan of it, I see the transition from college football to the NFL. And I see these players talk about the difference, right? And how everything is faster and the timings are a lot tighter and, and there's notably less room for error. Um, would would you say you feel a considerable difference in playing in your collegiate games versus now playing against the best that the Americas has to offer on a week by week basis? Oh no, you're both juggling. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, collegiate. Like I competed in both tier two and collegiate, and the difference between collegiate and tier two is already huge. Sure. Like it is ginormous. Like the best, the worst tier two team is the best collegiate team like mm. that that's how i would compare it right now mm -hmm. the difference is insane and like in collegiate i could swing anything and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and win my fights but like now i have to like actually think about the outcome if i smoke if i smoke here are they gonna walk through it are they gonna <laughs> sky flash through it in collegiate i could smoke this walk into it and then walk out of it and kill three sure. but now now i have to actually think about my actions Realize what they mean, realize what utility means what, and like the error, if I make an error, like sometimes I'll peek something that I shouldn't have peeked and I'll instantly get punished. Would you say that's the biggest difference then in, in tiers or it, let's combine, let's just for the sake of conversation, say collegiate and tier two are comparable. And then tier one is, is the gap. Would you say the, the big difference in those gaps is how punishable your mistakes are? Is that the biggest difference or is it something else? For me, it's pretty. It's a pretty large difference. Like, if you make a mistake, it can very well cost you the round, no matter how small it is. Like, say mm -hmm. you accidentally put a gap in your smoke, Cryo's gonna get three through that gap in the smoke. Like, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that could very well lose you the round. But in in tier two, there's no tier two player that's one tapping three through the smoke right. through the very small gap that you just left. So that error, that very small error, that doesn't seem that big of a deal, like, is a huge deal in tier one. Rooney, do you feel like do you, do you feel some of that? Like the 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 how unforgiving the T one space can be comparable to what you were playing in before? Um, a little bit. Like the in terms of like how teams move around the map, like rotations and and you know stacking and whatnot. Mm. Tier one is obviously a, a step ahead, multiple steps ahead of tier two. Mm -hmm. Um, but also like I said earlier, that's also something that you could you know punish if it, you know a team is moving a certain way you mm -hmm. can punish it um but in terms of like aim i think tier two has a lot of insane aimers and yeah. i think it, at, like at a certain point like aim no longer matters that much mm -hmm. um and and at that point it becomes game sense so um tier one has a gap in terms of like team play rotations utility usage um and then uh aim is i would say relatively similar in, in both sure mm -hmm. just because i mean at that point everyone is that good right right yeah. right Sure. Um, you guys joined a roster that obviously lost two very key members, very, very uh, popular or, you know, important, famous, whatever you want to call it, very notable members. But then you, so that, that aside is one thing, but then you guys also slotted in to, to, to a per, to a roster that has a lot of strong personalities too. So it wasn't just big shoes to fill, but there's some really big personalities on that roster. Was it was it difficult to um to earn the trust of these players and again Rooney I, I from like a calling perspective, was it difficult to earn their trust like was there ever a time when one of the guys, like, Zelsus pushed back at you and you had to push back equally as hard, or, or, or did they buy in pretty early on? Um, I'd say they made it pretty easy to mesh in. Hmm. And, you know, from day one, even trialing with them, it was very open to, like, okay, 
we want to see your philosophy, so run it how you want. Give us your strats, and we're going to do what you want to do. Hmm. And they, they ended up picking me for you know a reason, which ended up being that. Um, but, I mean, there is always going to be backlash. There's always, you know, hey, let's do this next time or whatever it may mm -hmm. be in terms of, you know, just improving. And, you know, that's normal. So if there's ever things that we don't like or I do something that, they think could have been done better they'll let me know and you know it's never taken personally it's always you know just improving on on what we can improve on which is honestly really impressive because you guys again to follow this this story of you guys both being uh newer and younger to the tier one space i mean imp imposter syndrome jake is that something that you've you've wrestled with i mean especially when you've got the team that's going like, hey, no, let's let's do this differently, or I didn't like how you did that. You know, things that would generally just be feedback to adjust for the next round. But is that something that was ever something you wrestled with, or like, damn man, like I've made it to the big stage. These guys are, you know, maybe I'm not doing the right things, or maybe I'm not playing as well as they expect me to, or I should be. No, big thing I like to do, like if uh Celsius or Zeppa is like oh maybe you smoke here next time maybe you pull back maybe you mm -hmm. TP over here like all I have to do is just like listen and take their advice because they've been mm -hmm. like competing for longer and like if I do have a disagreement with them like I'll bring it up I'll be like oh I could have smoked here but instead I smoked there and they'll share their perspective and I'll share mine and we'll come to an agreement on it like I really value their perspective on certain things and especially Matt's perspective. Like I always ask him while we're in a scrim, Hey, should I be doing this like this? Like he helps me like every single day, like becoming a better version of myself, like in the server, mm -hmm. like on my role in specific and helps make my job a lot easier. So like going into this, I felt like no imposter syndrome. I'm just like, I'm just happy to be here. Honestly. <laughs> uh, let's yeah. Let's talk about MC a little bit and, and Cupert as well. What has that system been like between between the the coaching staff between MCQ Pert and then uh, the starting roster as well? Is there a lot of freedom in how things are approached? Um, do you tell me a bit about that relationship be between the coaching staff and the roster and kind of how that works? Right. So uh, me specifically with Cupert and, and MCE, you know, we'll work before the team even basically wakes up. Um, we get up earlier than them and, and figure out what we want to do for the week, what we think the bands are going to be, what how we want to prepare for the week and who we're playing against and whatever, mm. whatever strats we want to run or try. Um, and Cupert and Matt are very knowledgeable of, you know, all the leagues in the mm -hmm. in the world and, and all the teams and what they're running and how we can make it our way if we want to try to, you know, take something and, you know, make it our own way. Um, and Cupert and Matt are very, very smart in that sense, and they, and they do that, that job very, very well. And Cupert's also a really good player as well, so mm -hmm. if we ever need him to slot in for a scrim or even if it was a match, like, he can do that job just as well, um, and we wouldn't have a problem. So, and... and and everyone trusts them, which is the biggest part. Yeah, that's um, huge. You know, having a coach and a, and a six player slash assistant coach, whatever you want to call Cupert, he does everything. Um, having trust in everyone, especially your teammates and coaches, like it's very important in a system, and we all trust each other, which is good. Yeah, I think. I mean, I've I've heard stories about Cupert, and I've heard that the dude is cracked, right? Even even just as a player. So for him to have that knowledge to be able to impart. Um, I, is obviously so 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 helpful. Um, Jake, tell tell me about. Please explain the big bean. <laughs> explain the big bean, bro. What 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 is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a nickname that I had for like my girlfriend. Like I don't know. It was, it was just a weird <laughs> nickname me and my girlfriend had for each other. And then one day I was just big bean. And then like the idea in my head to keep it was because like. Imagine like being paid like 20k a month sure. to play a video game professionally and you yep. get killed by some guy named Big Bean or you lose a match <laughs> to Big Bean. Like just the way that has to weigh on you is just insane. So that was like a big reason for why I almost kept staying as that name, but ultimately decided to like keep it as like a nickname type thing and just stay as JK for now. Well, okay, wait, hang on. Because we've had this conversation as talent internally. You just said it. You just said Jakey. Is it okay, Jake? It's, it's, it's is it Jake. Jakey? It's Jake. Help, help me out, bro. <laughs> it's just Jake, but I just added the extra E. Like, uh, why not? It's just Jake. I, but it just it's just for a little bit of extra flair. I can't just be Jake. 
I mean, I respect it. I think if you want to be Jakey, be Jakey. I think the first time I casted you, I said Jakey, and then I got corrected later, and I go, wait a second. No, this cat yeah. has two E's at the end of his name. Why would I pronounce you, you, it Jake? You can say whatever. Big Bean, Jakey, Jake. I, I do not care. It does not bother <laughs> me. I accept all. <laughs> I actually um, had like all casters that have casted my match DM me and reach out to me about how to pronounce <laughs> it. Um, how would you guys describe? And the reason this question comes up is, you know, there was there was so much discussion had around um, the for hundred thieves the swap from Sean to Mike's and then how Stellar changed his calling and he was much more, uh, you know, it was, it, they both described it as much more. Uh, loose, right? And reading the game instead of heavy XX, heavy virgin, you know, the, those kinds of things. How would you guys describe how you approach your rounds? Would you say they're they're much more exec heavy and, and rigid, or are they more loose and on the fly? Right. I mean, for my IGLing specifically, I've always tried to put myself around the most talented players, obviously. I always want to have the best team I could possibly have. Mm. So my calling style has always been very loose as well. Um, Because I want my players that are good in these areas to be good in those areas. And if I'm too restrictive and I'm calling too many set strats and set positions and set util, they're not going to be able to do what they're good at, you know? Hmm. So when I'm on a team with guys like Leaf and Zeppa, I can't can't (laughs) stick them in places and expect them to perform like they normally would. So I want to give them as much free reign as they can have to do what they do best and perform how they were going to perform best. And Jake, for you, obviously, again, not having, re- respectfully, not having the same degree of experience as, as Leaf and Zeppa and, and those guys, do you prefer the looser style? Mm, I absolutely like, they'll just say, oh, we're doing an AD fold this round, and I will simply be on Aster, and I will just walk up B, and I will just take a fight, and, <laughs> and, and, and Rudy allows me to do that, so I'm going to keep on doing that, and, like, until I get, like, in my head, obviously, like, I know if I get punished, like, I die one round where I'm overextending where I shouldn't be, I just simply will not extend that much the next round, but, yeah. like, him being a loose caller, like sometimes I can come with the team, sometimes I can go B, sometimes I can work up mid, like on Pearl and take a one v one and link, like that really helps me like find my confidence like early on in a series and be able to punish others that might not be expecting me or like mm-hmm. just take a duel that's gonna like build the momentum for the rest of the series for myself at least. Would you say? Well, uh, let me ask this question differently, Jake. How what what would you say is the biggest reason for this team's success so far? Because y- you guys have exceeded expectations, right? Even in your loss against Loud, no one expected you to take a map off of them, and you guys looked comfortable in your map win. You looked comfortable in the two that were losses, right? You 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 didn't roll over. You didn't thirteen three. You didn't thirteen two. It was thirteen seven, thirteen eight, something like that, right? Like they were competitive maps. What would you say is the biggest key to the success of the squad to this point? Uh, for me, at least, I have to attribute it to uh, Rooney's calling as well, like the loose play style that we touched on, mm. but also like the mid rounding from the other three. That's extremely important. Like, they almost always have the correct read, and when hmm. they don't have the correct read, we're all able to bounce back and still trust them, which is super important. But on other tier one teams, like you'll see, like we can talk about Carmine Corp from Europe, of oh, course, no, since they've not. been <laughs> since they've been in the news lately. <laughs> like you could, you you could see the lack of trust, like in oh, their yeah. gameplay. Like it's not that they're all bad players; they're really talented players. But yeah. you could see like how little they trust each other, and that is so important in tier yeah. one. Like even if Zeppa makes the worst play in the world. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to laugh about it. And then I'm going to move on to the next round. <laughs> yeah. Like it never happened. Make sure happened. you got to laugh real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know he trolled and then move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, the, I mean, this K Corp situation, they don't even trust themselves, dog. It doesn't look like they trust right. themselves, much else each other. Rooney, what's the big, what, why is, why has this team been so successful? Why have you defied expectations? Um, well, you know, like we touched on earlier, all these teams are, their gap isn't that big. And mm-hmm. it just takes the right chemistry to make a team play well. And, you know, that's why some players do well on some teams and then they move teams and they don't do as well anymore, sure, you know? Sure. It, it all it all depends on the system. And the system was already 
like a really good foundation to join in on. Mm -hmm. And then me and Jake happened to slot right in perfectly um, to the system and, and it and we mesh well, the personalities mix well. Um, the in-game chemistry is getting better and better and better mm -hmm. um, at a rapid pace too. So, you know, we, we didn't even expect to start our season this strong. We just wanted a, str a strong end and make playoffs. But we're starting strong, and then we're only going to get stronger throughout the season. So um, it's good to see for us that we, you know, are able to beat expectations this early. I mean, you guys have, and again, this was unexpected given the field. Of the American teams in Americas, you guys have the best record. Mm -hmm. You, every, everyone else is one and two or zero oh and three, or no, no, everyone's one and two, right? Yeah, I, I think the only zero uh, yeah. three team is Crew. Yeah. You guys have the best record of the American teams in the Americas. And you mentioned this, Rooney, a little bit. Jake, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Rooney said um, that you guys weren't expecting to be this successful at the beginning of the season. You know, maybe it takes you a little bit and you get warmed up and you make a push for, for playoffs late in the season. But be honest with me. Given everything that had gone on, what were your expectations, yours individually, leading into week one? Mm, my expectation was for myself to perform well. I didn't like I didn't go into it like knowing whether we were going to win or lose. Mm -hmm. I was confident in our team. I knew we had a high chance of winning the match, but I wasn't going to get down on myself if we lost. Like there's sure. going to be nerves. It's meshing in with a new team first time on stage. It could be different from practice. And like exceeding those expectations felt really really good. Like even taking a map off loud, I could have cared less if we lost 13-3, <laughs> 13-2 the next two games. Yeah. It, I would not even have blinked. To take a map off like a former world champion yeah. is like a dream come true. And so, although we did know we could beat that team, even though most of Reddit and VOR did not believe sure. in us, we, we were confident we could have taken a cent off of them. It didn't work out that way, but like we knew that we had the potential to be the best. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of harnessing the potential and doing it this early as we've shown like two against 100 thieves against eg and then even a one two loss against loud like we're already harnessing our potential this early and these are like harder matches like the first six at the start of the season mm -hmm. are like relatively harder in comparison to the last four sure. of the end of our split so like us doing well this early it's going to be good for us going into playoffs oh yeah i mean you guys are getting through the gauntlet and you're coming out less bruised and battered than you, you would have expected. Rooney, you seem like a really confident cat, bro. You you seem like you keep your wits about you. Um, you take care of EG week one, and then you head into loud. W what were your expectations? What, were, what, what did you think uh, was going to happen on the other side of that series against loud? Going into the loud match was like, Okay, this is the one match that everyone expects us to lose no matter what. Sure. So going into a match with that expectation is very easy to play well, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because you loose. have, yeah, you have no expectations at all. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do is good. And um, taking map one like so strong, like I think it was like thirteen seven, and it wasn't even like a close thirteen seven either. Like it was like we had control the whole game. Um, was like really really good for us going into the second map and then we won pistol second map and it's like okay at that moment i was like we won mm -hmm. and everyone's gonna shut up finally you know mm. and and then you know things went wrong and you know we could have <laughs> closed out ascent there was a couple moments that we we um messed up and and, and let the game slip away mm. um but still taking one map you know made a lot of people respect us um, me personally, and I'm sure all the other guys too, um, I got hundreds of messages from Brazilian um, fans and whatever, like, we respect you, we respect you, like, Dang. blah, blah. So it was really cool to see, like, everyone's kind of opinions change right there. And, hmm. um, yeah, especially the new players uh, getting that recognition from, you know, not only North America, but Brazilian fans as well. Because, you know, the the public view of the brazilian fans prior is like don't mess with them <laughs> you know right. you don't want to be on their bad yeah, side yeah. and being on their good side like on their first you know ever match against them is you know really cool for us well i think it also helps that you guys i mean you guys have earned the respect dog i still mm -hmm. think about that that 4k that you had uh on fracture that was fracture wasn't it <laughs> with the deagle the, i was with sean right. and bala dude right you guys are earning the respect of not just your peers, 
but of, of, and ultimately the people don't matter, but you're earning the respect of the people as well, right? Like you're earning right. the respect of the peanut gallery. Um, you mentioned that you guys were getting a bunch of like encouraging DMS and we respect you and dang y'all are real. Mm-hmm. Like, I apologize. I didn't really know your game. Things right. like that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. what was it like when you guys were first announced? Um, oh man. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Both of you. Oh man. It was like so much hate and so much love at the same time. It, mm. it, it, it's, it was weird to comprehend, you know, it's like you get messages from your friends. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Sure. You look at Reddit, you look at VLR. It's like, okay, don't look there again, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and personally, like none of that gets to me. So I'll still read it and, and laugh about it. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like the public view is like, wow, who, who are these people? Why in the mm-hmm. world are they? blah 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 so yeah it was it was different but for the most part and especially now it's like 99 percent love which is which is cool jake do you get a bunch of uh do you get a bunch of bad dms no on on twitter it was all good like every single like on my posts at mm-hmm. least like the, the join cloud nine post everything was love on that like on the main twitter's post not so much but <laughs> it happens <laughs> and on VOR like just reading the comments is so funny like i'll just get people calling me like ascendant collegiate trash can like they yeah. know just nothing about- it's so funny to read honestly cuz they don't know nothing about me I- right. all i want to do is like just play my game do the best that i can do and just show them what i can do you know yeah. like it didn't really bother me that much the hate especially huh. even now that's, I mean, that's huge for, for a young player too, dude. That takes, that takes a lot of maturity. Do you guys, you know, given some of that stuff and you both mentioned that you kind of doesn't bother you or, or you try not to let it bother you. And I, I mean, mm. we're human, right? Like that stuff never feels good to read about you at the end of the day, regardless of who it's coming from. That doesn't feel great. Uh, but you, you know, you, it doesn't bother you or you, you try not to let it bother you, what have you. Do you guys feel like you have something to prove? Do you feel like you have a chip on your shoulder and you need to prove the haters wrong? I definitely feel like we did. And I'm not saying we have entirely proved them wrong yet. Mm. Um, but we're definitely, you know, past that now where it's like, can they compete? Can they? Um, and going into week two versus loud. Cause the, the, the issue with the team at the moment is if we win a game, it's wow. The other team played bad. And then if you mm. lose a game, it's like, wow they suck mm, so no mm-hmm, matter what mm-hmm. there's no th- there's nothing good for us yeah. yeah there's no win yeah and going we beat eg it's like wow eg suck cloud nine who knows and then we could play against loud and it's like okay they took a map off them was loud trolling mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah how did they lose or, that map? like how yeah. do they lose and then you know and then we two hundred thieves and people i mean the majority of people are still like whoa 100 thieves suck which is like whoa where did that come from you know because yeah. they're supposed to be one of the favorites right and then the other half was like okay wait cloud nine actually is competing and they're competitive mm-hmm. so yeah jake you feel like you have something to prove dog at the start i feel like i did but i feel like we've like Dylan's saying, we passed that bridge. We're exceeding expectations like you've talked so much about in this interview so far. And I feel like that weight off of our shoulders has been lifted like since even after like taking the map off loud. Obviously, people still aren't giving the credit. I feel like we're capable of deserving. So we'll mm-hmm. just have to prove a little bit more. But like, it's not so much that there's a weight on our shoulders. Mm-hmm. It's that we're just starting to prove what we actually are as players individuals and teammates sure you guys have you know i so i casted uh your last match you know i remember thinking after that match like your underdog is no more right like we cannot we the people right like the public whatever cannot think of cloud nine as as underdogs anymore because you guys are continuing to deliver and perform in ways that um, are are shocking the world. You guys have, and and uh, that's very obviously coming through as confidence uh, for both of you individually. It's coming through in the way you guys, as a, a play as a team. Um, you guys have two. Let's see. Of the six games you have left, you have what? NRG, Furia, Sentinels, MIBR, Aviatan, and then Crew. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about the first two weeks. When you when you think about NRG and Furia, both very good teams right um furia perhaps was humbled a little bit by 
uh, by Loud uh, last right. week, but I mean, they're still they're still furious. How do you guys keep the the confidence? How do you keep the positive mental? How do you keep the you know, devil may care attitude about you and just do your thing? I think we're just super super confident with how scrims have been going mm. that we're gonna be strong no matter what. And I think a lot of these teams have worse map pools than we do, and we're a new team, and that also mm. gives That's us huge. infinite confidence. Yeah. Um, so we're we're pretty much confident in wh whatever map we go to that we're gonna put up a strong showing no matter what, sure. whether it's their map pick or our map pick. Um, you know, we're, we're fine with playing anything, and and there's a lot of teams that can't say that, and if they get something picked on them, they're going to have to pull out something gimmicky or just try something that they haven't done before to try to pull out a random win. Hmm. Would you guys say you have a seven map pool? Um, it will be very soon. <laughs> 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 Once one map is out of the pool in a week, then yes. <laughs> it, it will be. I, I agree. <laughs> Everyone celebrate bye, bye, the ice death box. of Icebox, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Once that's gone, we're good. Uh, no worries. Jake, how do you, uh, confidence leading it again, energy have looked a little human as well. Right. Uh, but you know, there's still energy and you know what they're capable of, uh, Furia an another stack team. Um, how do you, how do you keep the confidence? How do you keep the mental? I mean, to me, it's like what you just said, like they're human, like they're mm. going to make mistakes and like the mistakes are evident in both teams gameplay. Like, obviously I sit there like watching every match because mm -hmm. of course, like it's both entertaining and like educational when you're watching like another oh, team sure. play. And so like watching NRG play versus MIBR, I think it was this past week, like you're visibly seeing the mistakes in their gameplay mm -hmm. and like sometimes lack of coordination. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're not punishing what they, what usually energy was extremely good at punishing like even in lock-in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so you're seeing that they're like bringing like almost a slow start to the season so it shows that they're human and that we can beat them but i think whatever happens i think it's going to go to three maps mm -hmm. that's my opinion on that i think furia are a little bit overrated right now though i think really? i think really i think they're not as good as people say they are and i think we're gonna do really well against furia but that could just be my opinion, and maybe I get shut up in a oh, week, sure, and sure. every every fan hates me again. But that's my opinion. Like watching their matches, at least it feels like it's a lot of like X player go kill. If X player doesn't kill, they don't have a lot to fall back on. Sure. That's what it feels like watching X player being DJ's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Currently, yeah. Uh, Jake, you mentioned that you feel like Fury is a little overrated. Who are your top three in Americas? Uh, I'd have to say it's got to be Leviathan, Loud, or not in that order. Loud, sure, Leviathan. Sure. I still, th I still want to put Energy in my third slot. Mm. I, I think Energy has had like a slow showing, and I think they're only going to get better and more comfortable. Like it almost looks like they're going through a bit of like, I don't want to touch on like how the old Cloud Nine used to be like, but role issues. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of <laughs> feels like like watching the games. Yeah. It doesn't feel like everyone's totally comfortable yet and yeah, i think as I the agree. season goes on and they get more reps in on these like new roles that they're trying with like artists on kj and victor on like jet on some mm -hmm. maps and mm -hmm. raise i think as the season goes on they're just going to get better and i think they'll slot into that top three if we don't take it from them <laughs> rooney what do you think top three um no loud. particular order yeah loud energy and us I would say. You leave Leviathan out of the top three? Yeah. You think they're overrated as well, much like Furia? Um, I don't know about overrated, but I mean, if people consider them in their top three, then I suppose that wording, but I don't, I don't think they're necessarily overrated or underrated, but yeah. I think they're good. I don't know if they're top three. Hmm. All right, parting words for the Cloud9 faithful, and then I'll let you boys go. Jake, you're up first. Um... I want to thank everyone for like the support so far, like the happiness I feel like competing on stage in front of like all the fans and stuff like that. It's been really nice to see. I hope to keep on proving the people that support me that they should continue to support me and I hope to gain more fans along the way. For the haters, I want them to keep on hating because it's funny to see and I can't wait to prove them wrong as well. Rooney? Yeah, I mean, just thanks to the fans, thanks to the sponsors, 
um you guys make it easy for us to keep playing and mm. and make it fun for us so um keep supporting and we'll do our best to put on the show that we can put on and hopefully make the playoffs and go to tokyo so thank you best of luck to you guys for the rest of the season you have energy up next and then furia shortly thereafter friends uh who are watching if you have any feedback about the show uh let us know in the comments twitter disc uh, reddit whatever wherever wherever you're gonna put comments um about the show also make sure you follow these boys on twitch follow them on twitter follow them on Insta. do you guys have instagram you guys instagram no not twitch really. and twitter twitch and twitter twitch and twitch twitter, and twitter stick to twitch and twitter uh give the boys some love uh again fellas congratulations on a freaking burner of a start to the season i'm excited to see uh how you guys do that's gonna do it for episode whatever number this is uh of vandals we'll see you guys next time